they get taught math, of course, they get taught English. I mean, all of that stuff um, is, uh, is um, very easy to see and, and quantifiable, I think it's called, because they take tests, they do all of that. They get tested in the blacksmith shop. They get a mechanical drawing with ratios on it. Then they have to convert the ratios into the numbers that, for the mechanical drawing. Then they have to make the product. All of that is being taught. The thing that I'm hoping that they're getting is a feeling of self-worth. Because without that, they got nowhere to go. And once they got self-worth, really inside of them, they really got self-worth, they got no limits. They can go anywhere. The sky is the limit. And you got to give them hope. You got to give these these youngsters the charge to get out there and make a better world out of it. They have it. They have it in them. There isn't anything wrong with these kids. They're great kids. They they just a little bit of success that it took in order to bolster themselves up enough to charge out and go pick the oyster. In the future here, the the last big dream that I have is to get the 12 acres next door here. There are buildings in Eureka, Victorians, that, that are going to get torn down. I've already moved three of them in. There's one there and uh, two over here. Then move them up there and make a main street, fix up the outsides of the buildings, but open up the insides and make shops out of them instead of uh, houses and uh, turn it into an entire craftsman's village. And then the other half of the 12 acres will be uh, farmed with uh, Babe and Blue, the two oxen. The farming team produce the stuff for the craftsmen in the village. In other words, the spinners and weavers, uh, they would like to weave uh, linen. So the farmer grows flax, they pound the linen out, um, weave the linen cloth, and then uh, make their goods out of linen. The farmer can plant um, uh, indigo and uh, they can dye their, their uh, products with uh, indigo dye that was planted right on the uh, site here, right on the village site. And then increase the student body from uh, the 25 that we have now to 100. I'd like to be able to get to 100. That's, as, I think, as high as we can go. That's the last big dream. This is the reason for setting up the, the nonprofit right now because the millwork has funded everything. The school is not self-sufficient. The money that we get from the Humboldt Office of Education helps dearly, don't get me wrong. We hire uh, three teachers with that money and get most of our own supplies. The millwork funds the radio station. The millwork funds the tours. The millwork has borne the brunt of the load for everything uh, all the way through. 35 years now with the nonprofit we're splitting those things off into their own entity and then they can go get their own funding and let the millwork just uh, stand on its own that'll be delightful there have been a lot of times over the years that I have asked myself why am I doing what I'm doing especially when there were challenging times um, and we didn't know how things were gonna fit together and, and come out in the end um, and I don't know that there is a clear answer at any one particular time in a person's life. I think that I would not have accepted anything different in myself. I was the type of person who probably would have joined the Peace Corps if I hadn't met Eric. So we kind of created our own Peace Corps here at home. It's who we are. It's what we believe in. And ultimately, you can't take anything with you except your memories and and the choice, the knowledge that you made the choices that contributed in some way to making this world a better place, helping to, to make this world a better place for everybody. And that's, that's a gift that uh, continues to give. If the millworks hadn't have had to um, carry the whole brunt of the load all these years, um, yeah, Vivian and I would be, uh, and the millwork would be, um, quite well off, but it has carried the load, and, and I've, uh, someplace along the line, I made a conscious decision to do that, so, you know, I'm, I'm rich in, um, in spirit, I'm rich in, I do what I want to do, um, and I've, uh, I've lived a wonderful life and been able to give back to the community, so, yeah, I'm, 
we're very, very rich. We just don't have any money, that's all. I think the most important thing to remember is that everything is changing at an accelerated rate. It always has been, but now it's more and more dramatic. And so if you look at the reality around you and you think, oh, this is a crazy idea. How is this ever going to work? Don't let those thoughts get into your consciousness. Figure out what it is you really want and think of how it might work and start talking to people, start doing it. And eventually a door will open somewhere. Somebody will tell you something, something will click and you go, that's how I can do it. When you have commitment to something, even though it might not be something that regular every, everyday mainstream society views as normal, just stick with it and keep working at it and, and doors will open and miracles will come through from the most unusual, unexpected places. And all of a sudden you'll turn around and go, oh, it's working. <laughs> It's a real miracle. <laughs> follow your heart, follow your passion. Um, and that, that's not me, that's Malcolm Forbes. Malcolm Forbes said, um, follow your passion, get passionate about what you do and the money will follow. Don't, don't follow the money um, because that's chasing the dog around that you'll never catch. Follow your passion. And once you're passionate, then you get good. When you're good, the, the world beats a path to your door. I think it's really important that people know that the magnitude of what you do is not the significant thing. The important thing is that you do something, that you work from the heart and you give in whatever way you can. It's not that one way is better or bigger than anything else. In whatever way that a person has of sharing from their heart, sharing from their lives, from their experience. Do what you can do. And that ripples out in ways that, that nobody can know. We've gone through a, a uh, bursting of the bubble, if you will. And, um, and now we're going to redefine what business is all about. And somehow, through ignorance and, and uh, awkwardness, Viviana and I were able to define our business as the social bottom line is as important or more important than the financial bottom line. That's gonna be something that business is gonna have to embrace in the future. What is the social bottom line to what they're doing? Not just the financial bottom line. So what's the social?